Yo, this is the Wet Brains Podcast. If you're new to our podcast, we're six dudes in university based in different countries who are here to have a good time and make sense of life, and to include you as well. And with that... What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Wet Brains Podcast. I am joined by today by my friends, uh, Alex. Hello. Liam. Hello. Keenan, how's it going? G'day, cunts. <laughs> What's up, Meg? Hey. <laughs> Kobe, Vern, what's up? Vern is back. <laughs> um, so today we'll just be doing a continuation of our last episode, which is uh, going on about mental health and stuff. So uh, last episode we had Kobe and Alex talking about it. Uh, so now we're just opening up the floor for some of the other guys who didn't get a chance to talk about it. And yeah, let's just get right into it. Starting off with <laughs> the boys. Um, so I believe Meg and Keenan and Kobe, no, you guys didn't get a really. No, I, 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 no, I, I it was Liam. Liam didn't get a good chance as well. So, yeah. and anyone? Benjo? Yes, I, yeah. I got a few sentences in. So, <laughs> yeah. Right, uh, which one of you three wants to start it? Miguel, uh, do you want to go first or? Uh, I'm kind of hefty, so I think either you or Liam should go first. Alrighty. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, Let's flip a coin. Okay. Heads, heads. Liam, tail. Um, <laughs> Keenan. All right, call it. What do you call it? Oh wait, I if it lands on its side, just vertical, that's me. Yes. Uh, it changes. Right. Who, who did I say was tails? It's like Keenan. No, Liam. Liam. Uh, Liam, you're going first. Ah shit. <laughs> ah shit. <laughs> Here we go, go again. <laughs> oh my god. Life story part three. <laughs> Right. Well, I believe the topic was mental health, right? Mental issues, yeah. Just about mental health, mental issues, things we've struggled with. All right. Well, uh, to be fair, mine was the idea I had for today was more like a subtopic of that, mm-hmm. and specifically about uh, phobias, because I believe that is a form of mental struggles that we have had. Or face in everyday life. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I mean, as you may know, <laughs> <laughs> you guys can probably guess that I've been scared of roller coasters for a long time. And with wow. that, I mean, well, the reason for that is that, like, I've been pretty much deathly afraid of heights uh, for pretty much as long as I can remember since about, like, third grade or so okay did you have any like traumatic experience that caused it or just just like naturally you weren't vibing with tall (laughs) things yeah not even i can't remember a single incident it's just like maybe the fact i'm tall as well compounded it okay (laughs) you're always looking down (laughs) (laughs) yeah every time i walk outside i'm like whoa Okay, but yeah. But, no, I mean, uh, sometimes it can get pretty bad, is the problem. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I don't know if I told you guys, but this January, a previous January, I actually took a trip to Georgia. The country, not the state. There's a country named Georgia? Yeah, yeah, dude. (laughs) Where is that? Is that Europe? (laughs) Kind of. It's like east of Europe. Yeah. It's right below Russia. Okay. It's basically Russia. <laughs> yeah, that was, oh, that's, that's a, a Slavic country, isn't it? Isn't that right? Where Rasputin's yeah. from, or something like that? Stalin I was have... born in Georgia. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, one yeah. of them Russians, dude. So that's why you're there. <laughs> well, oh. He's not technically Russian; he's Georgian. I have honey from Georgia. Oh, honey. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry to keep interrupting. This no, no, no. <laughs> Do you have honey? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Annie. Um, but yeah, George has good honey, good wine, good cheese. It's it's like yeah. a mini Europe, but low key between Europe and Asia. So it's it's I don't know, like a gray area. But anyway, um, I was there, and one of our trips, I was with uh, two friends, um, and one of our trips was to go into the mountains, and that was oh. mainly their idea, because I'm like oh. mm, mountains, I don't know, man. <laughs> but legit. By the time we get up to the mountains, um, we're at this peak where there's uh, 
a monument to honor like Russia or something because they had good relations. And oh. the whole way up, they park the bus like on the edge of a cliff. And then the whole way up to the monument, there's no railing and it's just snow. So my like, dude, my phobia took over, man. I was literally crawling on the <laughs> ground, hands and knees. No, no, I didn't like... to laugh, dog. <laughs> bad, no, you're good, dude. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, it's crippling. And it is Same kind of ripple. funny. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's unfortunate. So, yeah. yeah, phobias, sometimes you have no control over it because mm-hmm. it's just unconscious behavior. It's like the whole time in my head in the mountains, I was like, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Holy shit. This is, this is it. My whole life was just 18 years. Damn. And... uh <laughs> How did your uh, friends react to you collapsing on the ground on all fours? Yeah, please. <laughs> I need to go. Liam just became the creature of the mountain, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I guess. I mean, they're kind of laughing too. Just trying to get me to have a better state of mind and stuff. They're supportive, so it's fine. I mean, it, it's rough because, like, well, phob- like the actual definition of a phobia, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like an irrational fear of something. Hmm or aversion to something like an extreme one so it's yeah. like it must be, oh, that's good, feel man. bad to have like a, a phobia now because it's like it most of the time because of the way it is you know defined it's an irrational fear so you know even that that kind of definition minimizes people who do have phobias in a way mm-hmm. because it's like oh yeah you, you shouldn't be having it because it's irrational type of thing Wow. We're know, just irrational just... creatures, though, <laughs> sometimes. Oh, dude. bird. <laughs> bird. <laughs> no, but Wait. don't most people have phobias anyway? So it's like... Like some form, some form. Some yeah. form. There's, Even there's, if there's, there's obviously know. like something deep down that fuck, like scares you one way or the other. Hmm. Like so if me, you were... I guess... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So, Liam, if you were to rationalize your fear of heights, how would you rationalize it? If ever, like, if you were to articulate your fear of heights, how would you say it and describe it to other people? Oh, okay. I mean, to be fair, I might have been uh, exaggerating or misclassifying when I said, like, it's a phobia. Because mm-hmm. in my mind, it's it's kind of rational. It's just more extreme than other people. Because mm-hmm. I guess I'm just more afraid of dying which is a rational fear mm. in my mind right. and yeah. it's like heights exacerbates the like potential to die okay that's fair yeah very rational yeah mm. yeah yeah dying that's what i think of it. not good yeah <laughs> very rational. Liam just conquered his phobia it's now just a fear <laughs> it's not just a fear dude that's great dude, just don't be scared <laughs> dude no it's rationalized just come on it's rational <laughs> <laughs> we solved all the phobias yeah, in the world he, he what are you guys' phobias like because i doubt do you, wait do any of you guys not have a phobia I, have a I wouldn't say anything extreme necessarily, but like I'm scared of the dark. That's something I've always dealt mm. with when I was younger. But you know, it's not as bad now. But still, I don't like the dark, mm. the unknown that scares me. Oh, you, Benjo, you had one. Uh, yes. Well, as of right now, I'm scared of turning in my work late because I have to catch up on so much shit for class. <laughs> <laughs> There's that. Dinophobia. <laughs> yes. I mean, what about you, Big? The ocean. I'm sure everybody knows yeah, this. That's yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Well, well you guys seen me try to play a uh, Subnautica? <laughs> yes. Oh, that was a that was a great like half an hour of fun for me. That was half an hour. Yeah. I guess when the uh, adrenaline's pumping, it feels really fast. But yeah. it was just like ten minutes. Well, it felt like 10 minutes of me on the ship, panicking for my life. <laughs> because the second I stepped into the water, I started dying. Like, I started hyperventilating. Oh, wow. No, but that's just me. I know I know. Michael hates the ocean, too. 
So I know I'm not alone. The boys. <laughs> Dude, I can be scared of the water with the boys. With now. someone. <laughs> <laughs> so like, um, like when you go to the beach and stuff, do you like like not want to swim and stuff because of it? No, I have like a limit. Benjo knows yeah. this from when we went to yeah. uh, Pico, because Sean it's was shallow. like shallow, like yeah. shallow yeah. water. So like no, I can shore. feel the ground. I'm okay. Okay. Mm. So you'd never want to do anything like surfing or that kind of stuff. No, like when um when we were at Pico, right, and we were swimming at the beach, and Sean was like, "Dude, let's go to the middle of the fucking ocean." I was like, "Um, nah, I'm good. You guys can go. I'll uh, I'll stay on the sand with all the sand crabs that'll bite my clothes off." Hey, Mr. Crabs, <laughs> bro. Yeah. No, but uh, ocean just isn't it for me. Like um, when we went to Bora, and a lot of people were like, "Dude." We should get a boat. I think it was the banana boat, where you have to like hang on to it, and they'll. I guess it's like, was it paragliding? No, parasailing, something like yeah. that. Mm. You get dragged but along like, behind a boat, like on a raft or something. Yeah, but this time you're flying or something. Uh, yeah, pa- paragliding or something like that. I don't really like heights either. Oh my man. So, <laughs> that, oh, man. Stuff like deep water, uh, it's not the best combo for me. Really wasn't, really wouldn't be a good time. I just didn't do it. No, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, Alex? What uh, you got anything you fear, except fear itself? Shout out, um, uh, Roosevelt. You said that I think. Um, not today. Hey, Grillin. I'm just joking. Go ahead. I think my main fear comes from uh, fear of dying because I don't know what's uh-huh. there. Right? I'm not a very religious person. Um, yeah, I, I can go on and can, like, I can talk all day about how uh, I don't think religion, um, well, in most cases, is it's, it's very unlikely, right? Uh-huh. But uh, I see the I see the reason why people like hop on to religion because it's a comfort, because um, yeah, it's a realization that like, you know, the, all you've known is consciousness. All you've known is being aware, and when that's taken away from you, and you don't know what's on the other side, whether or not it's you still being conscious or aware, or mm-hmm. it's all being taken away from you, and it's gone, right? It's like sleeping, yeah. but like you never wake up. Um, I think that scares me because part of me, part of me is still unsure of like how I'm going to live my life. And I don't want to go knowing that I haven't lived my life to the fullest extent. Yeah. And I think like a lot of people have that same kind of idea, you know? Um, so like if I die prematurely, I'm so scared of that because I know, I don't know if I ever got the chance to like live to live, you know? Yeah. Or even like if you get a second chance anywhere else type of thing, right? Yeah. Kind of. I mean, just to compound on that, like I don't know. I I. It's interesting that you say that because like I'm kind of the opposite per se when it comes to like what comes after death. You know, it's very interesting to me what feeling nothing feels like. You get what I mean? Because like if there is like no heaven or whatever. Like, what is that going to feel like? What's nothing going to feel like? I don't know. It's well, interesting you won't know because you I'm, won't feel anything to begin with. I'm not advocating um, to find out. just want to make that clear. But, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's just an interesting concept because, like, like you said, like, all we know is consciousness and whatever reality we're in. So what, what is it like when it's gone? I don't know. It's just intriguing <laughs> to me. Yeah. Kind of morbid, but uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely a rational fear. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. How about uh, Keenan, the fearless man himself? He knows no uh, no phobias or for that matter. I have been thinking. Uh, the only thing I can really think of would be like disappointing people. Really, like, yeah. oh, you'll get come to that. learn that like it's yeah, if you disappoint people, you get that really fucking shitty feeling, and I just don't yeah. like that feeling. So I always like. So we go through my head is like, am I gonna disappoint someone if I do this? It's like, oh, I I get that, dude. Yeah. I get that, dude. Yeah. Mm. I hit home when you said that. Yeah. Oh. 
So. Mm. Mm. I think yeah. like the one thing you can really come from that situation is just try your best not to make promises you can't keep. You know, that's what I've learned when I disappointed people because I, I I made promises and I knew I didn't like I did I didn't deliver, and it was like the worst feeling in the world. Like the feeling of you letting down someone that thought they could rely on you. Uh, yeah. It's very disappointing for you as a person because you thought you could do better, but you didn't. And then you yeah. beat yourself up for it for so long. <laughs> um, like you just think like, oh, I'm such a fucking asshole for doing that. Oh, I'm such a bad friend. I could have done better. Why didn't I do better? Right. And then just you beat yourself down even more. And then like the fact of you ever trying to make promises sort of like you're, you're not capable of making promises as much from my experience because then you're scared of just disappointing. But um, from what I can really say is that just sometimes you just have to trust yourself and just try your hardest because that's all, all that really matters at that point. Yeah. I, I yeah. think it's important not to dwell on that too much. Like, say if you do let someone down. Um, I, I just like, personally, I like the mindset of the phrase that you're reborn every second. Like, <laughs> I know it sounds stupid, no, but it's fine. the things you you do yesterday can always be changed in the present moment, and it's important to like learn from your mistakes and to build up from there. Absolutely, That's fair. I, I, yeah, yeah, I agree that I, I was just laughing because I just got reminded of El Tigre is reborn. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God damn! But yeah, yeah no, shout out, a, dude. It's a, <laughs> it's a fair point. Um, so, working off of that, you know, the whole thing about, uh, being scared of dying especially. Yeah. Of course, it's a different case for people who are struggling with, you know, thoughts of suicide and all. Yeah. And, even though it seems like such a taboo topic, literally everybody talks about it. It's it's kind of crazy how many people go through that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like even for, even for the person who talks about it, right? In the head, you're sort of like, all, you know, since I'm talking about this, I'm sort of like a negative person. Like I give the wrong kind of atmosphere around me. Yeah. And uh, for me, at least, when I do talk about things like that or talk in that way, I get really, really scared of how people um, see me, how other people see me, which isn't a great thing, which is something everybody has to work on when they worry about things like that, of course, because, you know, it should be known that the person you need to impress the most is always yourself. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's always just going to be you and yourself alone. That's, that's, that's your life. Nobody else is around you forever because your forever is only however long you're around. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's sort of like, strange how common it is that people have to struggle with things like uh, depression, anxiety, the whole nine yards because yeah. I don't know if a lot of it is just how the world is. Like, for some people it could be, especially now, you know, the state of the planet. Before, it would be like global, uh, global warming and stuff, right? It would be your biggest concern or whoever's in charge of, you know, whoever's voted president or leader of, of any country. Like, uh, for a while, I know, well, I don't, but for a while, you'd think with the war in Afghanistan that went on, yeah, a lot of people who had just signed up for the army, of course, a lot of them, of course, none of them would have had experience, you know, on the field because yeah. there hadn't been a significant war that included two 
at least one major, major, like, first world country like America since, you know, World War Two. So for a lot of people that is like, oh, no, this is happening in my lifetime. Yeah. And even though, you know, that's what you sign up for, there's also a lot of benefits and stuff that mm-hmm. come along with it. So what you're doing is for a good cause, especially for yourself. You're doing it for your own benefit. But at the same time, you're risking so much that you never expected to risk. And a lot of people did lose their lives, which is crazy. Yeah. How, especially because with how long the war went on, mm-hmm. all those people who signed up next year kind of knew what they were getting themselves into. So those people had the, you know, had the, I guess you could say, privilege of knowing what you were going into. And I guess, you know, there's this whole thing about veterans and PTSD and then a lot of people with anxiety these days makes it really hard for um, a lot of people to get by, even for the civilians, knowing that a war could start at an, at any time. Like, um, this almost happened this year, right? Yeah, it didn't help that at the beginning of the year they were... Uh, what was it like? Like a base got bombed or something? Uh, yeah. Something, I forgot what the exact event was. So. Yeah, it was between the, you know, the U.S. Like and Iran. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, it's a and, drone strike that killed Iran's one of their top generals. Yeah, and like, man, people like I don't know. I got a lot of my news through the memes, right? But <laughs> it was all over that. Like there was you know, a it was like there yeah. was the whole thing with North Korea too, right? And like South Korea, like the. You guys know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah. Uh, but they're good now, right? I'm pretty sure they're good now, Are they? right? Mm. Well. They didn't, they didn't like, um, they open up the border and like that military demilitarized zone or whatever. They, they opened that up. I remember seeing it on the news, like both of the president, well, Kim Jong-un and like the South Korean president like shook hands on the borderline or something. Mm. You mean uh, the uh, president of Korea? And then the Chad Supreme <laughs> Leader. Yes, exactly. Oh, the one that was reported dead like three times this year. <laughs> Big Daddy, guess I'm alive. Dude. I'm back here, Samad. So <laughs> they're, they're always playing games there in North Korea. Sounds like a fun. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, they, they, they got you rid should... of Corona so fast. Yeah. I wish we did. <laughs> Sad, dude. But you know, Indeed. instead of uh, instead of trying to get money for mass testing, we decided let's put fake sand in the Manila Bay, <laughs> <laughs> and that's definitely gonna help us out, dude. Oh. Yeah, you know the bay we can't see. Great. Yes, exactly. Um, has the pandemic affected you guys in any way with how you know your emotions, with how you feel, and oh. you know your any struggles you yeah. might have had in case they yeah. got worse. Yeah, definitely, dude. Yeah, it's without a doubt. To, I think like, everyone has yeah. to understand that. It's because we we are now severely lacking ways to express our emotions towards other people, and like, and for most people, a lot of it is like a physical way of expression. So, mm. it's yeah, dude. I I feel like a lot of times during this quarantine, I've become quite like an emotional ball. Like it, t- it takes very little for me to be like you know, off, you know, or like feeling down because like one person might have said this and I'm just thinking, oh, fuck. But then if I had like the say, for example, if I was like able to go out with them and stuff and be like, oh, it's fine. You know, like things are G, you know, I don't have to like overthink this, but. Oh, yeah, that's but, fair. So definitely yeah. just like being isolated really like concentrates your emotions. You know, if you leave like a, a glass of iced tea like, you know, those powdered ones, like, alone, like, a lot of the sugar will end up just kind of, like, piling down at the, the bottom. Like the, you thought about a lot, Kobe. Yeah. No, yeah, no. I'm saying this is, like, so it's, like, concentrated like that. So this quarantine is just, like, the bottom of an iced tea that's been sitting out. Except for, it's like, not sugar. Months. Yeah, it's, it's, not it's sort of moldy now. <laughs> well, it's well, pain. I think, it's pain. I think, like, the one good thing 
God forbid me from saying that's right. But like, <laughs> the one good thing is you. I feel like with like the hustle and bustle of life, people don't really get to slow down as much, right? And I don't know if you guys like ever do this, but I obviously take a lot of time for myself to think about my emotions, um, as my as uh, to like help me understand like my faults and issues and things that I need to work on. And I don't know if I can say the same thing, but um, a lot of people from my experience are, are struggling with this concept because they're not used to having this much time to think about themselves or their emotions because they're obviously preoccupied by a lot of things, right? And that's obviously a struggle for some of them because they're not realizing a lot of things or they're having a hard time dealing with things that they normally haven't dealt with before. But mm. I feel like now, you know, since you're obviously having a lot more time for yourself, you can actually try to think about yourself more as a person and try to understand yourself more as a person rather than trying to sweep your your problems underneath the rug and just try to put a smile on you have to like come to face them you know and yeah, so to true. some people some people they would be like i don't want to face them and you could you could try living your life like that but eventually it's gonna hit you it's gonna bite you back in the ass one day and i'd rather have it like now more than like later yeah, bite your own ass before anything else bites you back or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> right. You eat your own ass before somebody else did before you. <laughs> Something like that. You need to ask before your ass gets eaten, bros. Hey, <laughs> eat your own ass before someone remember, eats the rem- man. <laughs> remember to be the first at the buffet line. That's all I'm saying, dude. <laughs> it's the, uh, it's the your own centipede rule. That's what it is. <laughs> dude, damn. You're really out here. I'm first in line to eat my own ass. Do you get out of the way? <laughs> Remember, if you're going to take anything away from this podcast, be like the human centipede. Eat That's ass, what we're trying to say. That's our message. <laughs> <laughs> but um, all jokes aside, though, um, earlier you said you had a lot of hefty stuff, Make, uh, Are you willing to share that, if that's fine with you? Uh, like, you don't have to... I'm okay with, like, uh... Like, a fair amount. Yeah, just... whatever you're comfortable with, really. It doesn't have to be, like, your entire life story and all that, right? Like, whatever you're comfortable yeah. with sharing, that's completely fine. Yeah. Um, okay, so, um, with the quarantine and all, you know, the pandemic doesn't help. Because, of course, now, you're literally anxious about everything that's going to happen. You can't go outside without feeling scared. And if you were someone that struggled with that before like somebody that was not socially the most comfortable around a lot of people especially if you know you're worried about your presence your presentation rather now you know you you're you're being asked to wear a mask and if you're in the philippines a face shield in most places and it's mandatory so now you're remembering more about your appearance and you know i have to look this way I need to act this way. I ha- like. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but you have to be hygienic, like publicly hygienic, and all of that. Plus, you know, letting that sink in at home with being scared of, oh, what's gonna happen to this place that I used to go to with friends, or what's gonna happen with. For example, college applications that were almost done. And then on top of that, you know, even if you do get the applications through, you're going to wonder, okay, how is this going to work now that I've applied to college? Am I going to be accepted? How long is that going to take if I do get accepted? Um, How's college going to be like? Would I be able to even move? If you're going abroad, or would I stay at home? If would I stay at home is the question, then if would I stay at home is the answer to your question, then, you know, now you're thinking, oh, is this really what I what I thought? Is this really worth it? Because a lot of schools didn't lower their tuition fees. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of the time, what you're paying for is the facilities, you're almost never paying directly for what the teachers are telling you, right? right? Yeah. Like, a good example at our school is, you know, it has, like, I want to say top-of-the-line facilities, especially compared to other schools in the country. And mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure the tuition never changed. 
Do one of you guys know that? Like, know for sure? You're talking about a high school? Yeah. Tuition never changed. Like, it only it increased, at, like, on each... Like, like after you had... I think it was, like, for example, 9 and 10 were, like, one price. 11 and 12 was one price. Like, uh, 7 and 8 was one price. Like, oh. So it just increased as, like, depending on what level of, older. like, school you were. Yeah. And that's the thing, right? Because now, what are you paying for? You're paying to see your teacher every day on, like, fucking Skype. Even though everybody uses Zoom. That's yeah. that's it. That's literally what you pay for for free. What you don't pay for by just getting Discord and hopping on with someone smart. Yeah. It, it's essentially just that. So, like I, I get yeah. that. To an extent, like, you know, uh, why is the tuition so much for these classes when, like, like for example, in, in uh, in my college right now, shall not be named. Uh, you know, one of my profs just gave us like three, three or four videos to watch, like that are like an hour and thirty minutes total of watch time, and told us to write a paper on it, and that that was our assignment. You know, zero teachings from uh, the teacher himself in, th in that specific moment. So it's like, okay. So why am I paying like 60,000 pesos for this, you know, type of thing? Hmm. Yeah. So and like, I, I definitely get that kind of like, um, that point of view, dude. A lot of people are like, you know, think about how the kids would feel. And I mean, that's fair. Think about yeah. all those kids in their, you know, formative years, not just the seniors and the juniors who lost the, the last years of their high school, which would I say are the best years of your, of your schooling days, you know, at least for me. I love junior and senior high school so much that if it were to be taken away from me, dude, I'd be devastated. But you also got to think about the kids that are going up right now. You know, maybe like the age of 10 to 13, the ones that are going through puberty, having to live with this for who knows how long, a year maybe. Mm -hmm. It's been six months. It's basically been a year since... The pandemic started nine months to be exact for most people all right because yeah. at least in the philippines we started quarantining like taking it super seriously back in march mm -hmm. and it's september the quarantine yeah. hasn't been lifted in six months and it yeah. doesn't feel that way but it is but you also gotta yeah. imagine what it's like to be the parents. I think the parents have it the worst. How so? Because if you're a parent, your number one priority is you know providing for your children. If you don't have children, your number one priority is staying with your job, having a source of income. Because you have nobody yeah. behind you. Um. So, mm. first things first. You don't even know if your job is stable anymore because of yeah. like even in big companies that get a lot of money passively they're still letting go of a lot of people just because it's been yeah and, it's and been a lot of releases. money even use like half of your staff like um kobe mm -hmm. uh i don't know if you've been following recently but the wwe released like what yeah a lot of people like 20 or 60 i don't even know the number so they initially what happened was like they furloughed a lot of their crew members so the producers and uh you know agents and stuff and then they released maybe in their first batch they released maybe like 20 to 30 wrestlers yeah. right and it's kind yeah. of unfortunate to see because you know that company had enough money to keep them all employed for the next two years or so you know but yeah, in any safely. case like it's it's a definitely a tough situation for most people especially businesses because they obviously want to be a business still and make money and they have to let people go if they want to make money still but it's very unfortunate yeah. for those people because they probably have families they have people to feed 
So now they're out of a job and they really need to have like a choice against it. Yeah. So if you're an adult, weigh a lot on like one psyche, like how the fuck am I going to like do this now? Yeah. Yeah. Because like pandemic now sounds like a really easy word to say, but like back in February, you know, Nobody's really dealt with a pandemic unless you're going to talk about, you know, Ebola. But okay. most of the people that I know, at least, at the very least, never even had to really experience that. Because that stayed in, that stayed where it started. It never really branched out. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're a parent, um, but if you're a parent, you know, not only are you anxious about whether your job's stable or not, but you're also thinking about how it's affecting your kids. Because a lot of these kids are really fucking sad right now. Like, they're really depressed. Like, I remember I was scrolling through Facebook because um, I had really nothing else to do. And I saw this video of this dad, right? Okay. And he was talking about how his kid committed suicide. Yeah. Because he he said it was specific. Like, the kid said that he didn't want to be a burden anymore. Like, he felt too pressured in a way, I guess, to, like, be this person that's hanging on to the parents, which is fair. I'm sure most, well, a lot of kids these days actually... You know, think that way. Uh-huh. Especially because when you graduate, your first thought is, okay, what do I do now? I need to get a job. I need to start providing for myself. I need to, you know, leave the nest. And that's hard to do now because if you thought, you know, your job being stable was hard to tell, getting a job is even harder. Because who the hell is going to hire you now? Yeah. It's definitely a lot harder now to find any kind of work, to be honest. Yeah. So everybody's just having a hard time. And if you're struggling with anything, like, you know, before all of this, like, the weight just gets immense. Yeah. And you can't you can't distract yourself, which is a, a lot of people's way to you know cope so now you can't distract yourself you're left to face it yeah yeah people don't have that kind of like escape from reality that they're used to having when you're able to like you know have the same amount of freedom as you know let's say if we could go out right hanging out with friends i'm sure that was an escape of reality for a lot of people i'd say that's like mine if i'm being honest um but yeah i don't know it's tough mentally the the strain of you know not finding an escape is kind of tough well, yeah pretty tough i'd say i think i think that's understandable obviously because yeah. you do want to have your own like space and your own ability to like escape some of the things that uh are quite difficult to deal with right um but as much as as much as escapism like helps you cope right eventually you're gonna have to face the reality like yeah, you, you, you can you can put a cover on something as much as you want, but it's not going to disappear. Um, and if you're struggling with like mental health issues and it's been exasperated by the current quarantine and pandemic, then I think maybe that's a step for you to try to you know better yourself. Um, like I I've been I've been seeing therapy before uh, like lockdown even hit. Um, in Australia, and then I'm still seeing therapy because, like, I I know that I have to focus on my mental health and well-being, right? And I I, I advocate for anyone if they're feeling really <laughs> shitty to obviously try the best to see some form of a specialist. But if not, then have some form of communication between your friends, obviously, because it's always better to like you know share the load, even if your friends may not be able to understand it or aren't like fully aware of it. You can always like rely on them supposedly in most cases 
and yeah. even even if your like mental health is deteriorating because of how you're not able to like live your life really like like I yeah this is gonna last a couple of years and this might change a lot of things but I think life will still go on you know and it's it sucks like you you're you're dealing with a like so many fucking things right now like the world's in fucking shits it's fucking dog shit right and it's it, it leads to like there's big uncertainty and anxiety for the future like i'm i'm contemplating whether or not i want to fucking have kids in the future if i don't want to put them in a world like this right and it leads to those kind of anxieties and fears and maybe some people are just like they probably think like well if i kill myself then maybe i don't have to deal with that and honestly i think that's the worst option to pick yeah because obviously you don't want to do anything about it and you rather just suffer honestly like i understand what it's like being in that kind of position but there's there's ways to help you know even if you don't you feel like you can't contribute to the changing of things you can always help yourself and start off by controlling what's around you and then maybe from there you can start doing things to help the world around you in the smallest ways possible maybe by just being a nice person and just living life because you obviously don't know what's going to happen but the best you can do is just live it yeah i think like it's kind of just trying to find is a fulfillment in life or your purpose per se because it's kind of like you know it's it's hard to find that especially now since it's like we're we're not in we're it's gonna we're in harder positions to even achieve things that we might want to do and like in those especially with people dealing with like thoughts of suicide and things like that it's you know you know at least from my experiences with the people that i know who have dealt with that in the past you know a lot of the times they're one of their main uh statements that they like to say is that you know they they don't feel like they're you know worth being in the world or taking up space or that they don't really have a purpose or you know that kind of thing and uh i definitely think you, you just gotta be there for them and and kind of reassure them being like look you may not know now but then like so does like 80 percent of the population also don't, doesn't know what they're meant to be doing or what what can fulfill them in life so i think it's just kind of like a way to reassure people who are going through that that they're not alone it's a normal thing for these things because i think a lot of the time it compounds on that fact because maybe they don't they feel like because they're feeling that way they're they're different and other people don't think the same they're gonna think of them as lesser because oh you know why do i think i'm like this but then they obviously think differently and you know that compounds on the feelings and kind of like makes them feel worse so at least you know my two cents for that would always just to be like if you know somebody who's like going through that it's it's you got to make them feel reassured in progressing forward if that makes sense in some way yeah you, you really do problem. have to like as much as you try to say to yourself like i'm alone i have no one that's not that's not true you have there unless you've cut off people from your life you have someone and even then you you think like no one's thinking like me no one is understanding what i'm going through like your personal problems are still your personal problems but there will be people there that obviously have gone through similar things or can obviously sympathize right and yeah it's all it's all it's a two-way street right whether like you receiving help but at the same time you allowing yourself to get help right like if you don't reach out you can't expect people to help pull you out because if you don't want help then you're not going to get it you can't you can't get it if you don't want it so you have to acknowledge that and take the steps forward that you say like i need some help to like get myself out of a rough spot and there's no shame in that there's absolutely no shame in that whatsoever whether you're a guy a girl or whatever you want there's no shame in that whatsoever and it's yeah. something that you just have to understand and normalize like there's no shame in like saying like yo i'm i've been a bit suicidal i'm i need some help right now so like help me plant my feet down the ground and if you yeah. if you're the kind of person to like say like oh dude you're ruining the vibe then you're a fucking asshole there's no there's no who gives a shit about a vibe if someone has like mental health issues and it needs to be addressed right yeah, yeah. 
And like that's the thing, like oh like if you, people are always so concerned about what are they gonna be perceived as, like if they say they're suicidal. That that's that's I think that's something that shouldn't even be a thing. Like if someone says they're suicidal, then people should help. Rather than just try to like, oh, I don't want to hang out with you because like you're suicidal. Yeah. I want you to like fucking give me your bad luck. No. I feel like that's more emblematic of the people you're around, or like this, like or just like like I want to say society in general, but like you get what I mean, like the, the the people you're around, like the culture that was been cultivated around you, makes you feel that like it's not okay to speak out about how I feel about these type of things, because it, like Miguel said at the beginning, it was like it's quite a taboo topic, even though a lot of people you know suffer from it so i think it's just kind of the people around you that kind of because you know like alex said you should be able to say it naturally or like just say it outright because it's not a wrong thing to say it's not a wrong thing to feel feelings are valid and you know no one should try to like minimize or invalidate it you get what i mean absolutely yeah. so but yeah it, it, i feel like it's quite emblematic to of like the people around us if you don't feel like it, you you're able to say it then i think it's like maybe it's the people around you it's i highly doubt it'll ever be the person um saying that or feeling that because yeah people around you have to make you feel comfortable to want to share it because it is a tough thing to share you know it, it is always a tough thing to say that you're vulnerable you know we are quite prideful creatures you know if that makes sense so we always want to like put our best step forward and look the best and feel the best that we can in front of people so it, it inherently it takes a lot to admit that hey something's wrong you know i i'm, I'm going through something and i think it's like really brave when I, whenever somebody steps forward and says like I, look i need help like it's tough so you know and it's our job as the people around those people to be there when they need us to be there when you know they need help and to help them and direct them into like a better life of you know or a better like living basically you know that makes sense yeah yeah so i definitely think it's it's quite a lot but at least in recent years especially like within the last couple of uh, decades um like mental health has been quite quite um has been advocated for a lot more mm. you know and you know people are more aware of these things obviously if you compare this to like like maybe like 40 50 years ago like mental health oh what are you just like you're a pussy like if a dude tries to say something like dude i'm feeling something like i'm feeling kind of sad or like i'm feeling this like, well men aren't supposed to be like that you're supposed to be tough you're supposed to be strong whatever like whatever stereotypes you want to think of but they, they're they were stereotypes for a reason because they were real right at some point so at least i'm happy to see it within the last couple of decades that things have progressed you know there are a lot more people being able to share their story and and be open about needing help and stuff so you know, at least we're taking the right step forward, in my opinion, right? No, I, I agree with you. Like, I see a lot with uh, with old people, especially with, like, my grandparents. If, if you want to talk to something about, like, mental health, whether it's, like, anxiety or suicide, they don't have that same sort of response as when if you were to go to someone in our generation, like, they don't respond the same. They don't understand all the same like little problems and everything or and, you know like oh, they so. just see it as like oh it's you know shake it off like uh take like a concrete pill or whatever you know like harden up they don't they don't agree with our leading it out like going to see a therapist like they don't it's not the first thing that comes to their mind because of that's how they were brought up yeah that's well put. I can't really blame them for that because that's how they were brought up. I think it's also yeah. um, just like we have to like educate them as well sometimes. Like, hey, you know, this, this is how it is now. You got to do it like this, you know. Get with the times, yeah. dude. Get with the times. Yeah. <laughs> what are you, yeah, old? Are, you, are, you, are you hip? Did you break your hip? What are you, you're a boomer? Hip? That's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Don't tell me you're old, grandma. 
<laughs> You're old. Just be young, dude. What the dude, fuck? You're just young. Just young out. It's that simple. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> Don't think of you. I think that's that's like that's like a fair thing to say though. Like for anybody that's actually had problems like those, the um, the hardest person to tell will always be older family member. Yeah. Mm. I feel bad. Because if like, you tell your friends, you know how they're, they're going to react. You can feel yeah. comfort in saying it to them, but... Older people? Boomers, might I say? Good. Um, they, they, You don't even know if they're going to take you seriously to begin with. Because, you know, you, say, you can say a lot of things that'll just be responded with, Oh, you're just going through a phase. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's well put. Yeah. And, you know, if you hear that and you're young and impressionable, just looking for answers, you're going to take that and be like, okay, I just, have, I just have to wait for this to be over. But if it's a problem that's persisting, it's not going to be over. It's just going to keep coming back. So now you're sitting there waiting with a problem that's only getting worse in your head. With your only piece of advice being, oh, just let it stay there. It'll do its thing. It'll leave. No. That's that's not the case a lot of the time, at least anymore. I mean, even for people, you know, older. I mean, look at the, I guess you'd say, it's it's a very different uh, playing field. But look at, like, you know... Uh, soldiers that come back with PTSD. Yeah. They just have to live with it. Because they couldn't get help for it. And that stayed there forever. And at that point, it's really up to you to like try to muscle it out and find a solution for yourself that you can do. You know? Yeah. Well, that's all. That's all that's on my mind, at least. Right. I guess to to jump in and kind of jumping back, uh, agreeing with what you said and to what with Kobe said earlier about, uh, I mean, specifically the emotional support for guys. I mean, we're all guys here. So unless. Well, unless. <laughs> but actually, my friend uh, at the same uni took this class for like um emotional support systems and just like the networks we make and she came across this one study about how specifically for guys um i mean this can also be applicable to girls too but especially in the case of guys where you've been told like oh you you shouldn't be open about your feelings you gotta muscle up like kina was saying that older generation's line of thinking um those who don't have another guy friend, like specifically male friend to be open with and talk about are highly or more likely to commit suicide or like have mental health issues down the road. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's kind of like what you said, Kobe, last episode. I think now is a better time to just reach out to people than ever before if yeah. you have the chance. And I mean, fortunately for some of us, like Benja and I were able to just go on walks and just chill, just be with each other. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen another human person outside this household in like months, dude. <gasps> Rip. <laughs> but yeah, it's, reach out. That's definitely like you now. Yeah. When times are tough. There's gonna be somebody there for you. That's kind of like you, you'll be surprised who's there and who's willing to be there for you so yeah yeah Yeah. yes 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 very very nice Uh, also i just want to i kind of like pinned this in my mind just so i can remember to say this because it's nagging me a bit um just about that school thing 
like, yeah, I agree that maybe like the tuition shouldn't be that much, but I also don't want to blame any of my teachers because I know I kind of singled out my teacher there. Don't want to blame him. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> what's not what's their name? Shout out, dude. Let's go. No, 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 no. no. I just, I just want to say it's like, I don't want to blame even the schools for like this thing because like, if anything, it's not their fault. The pandemic's still going on, you know? And I know in probably in Benil's case, I can pretty much speculate that they were probably expecting an academic freeze and then they didn't. So then they were trying to rush for like to build up their whole like curriculum online and like online learning is kind of tough. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's kind of something we got to do because that's where our country has put us in. Uh, I'm not going to point fingers at the government, but, you know, I just want to put that out there because it's been nagging in my mind a bit. I just want to make sure that I'm not blaming my teacher for anything because <laughs> He seems really nice. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know. Online learning is tough, definitely. And it's going to be tough transitioning. But I think it's just something we have to do. And like it's necessary because like I still think people should be learning. Education is a good thing. And if we have to get it through these kind of means, it's better than nothing, in my opinion. That's, that's true. true. That's true. I, I have like a small thing to add. Um, if you're online learning... Uh, just be grateful you have a teacher. True. Honestly, yeah, yeah. they're they're trying yeah. their best. Like, I, I'm, yeah, I'm saying this even though I don't have like any parents or anything like that in teaching or anything like. But um, I obviously sympathize with teachers because I know some teachers obviously struggle with technology because they're a bit more old school yeah. and old fashioned. So yeah, a lot just, of my profs are like that. So like yeah, the fact that they're goodness. trying their hardest to still give you some form of education, which in it by itself is something that not a lot of people get. Yeah, uh, especially in these kind of times, um, just at least be grateful and at least somewhat be nice. They're trying their hardest, and all you can really expect from someone now is for them to just try, because like they're not even expecting much from you other than you trying as well. Yeah, like don't be an asshole to your teacher. Like, oh, if they mess up, don't be like, oh my god, look, he fucked up. Like, what, dude? Come on, like, shit. Imagine trying to plan out a whole fourteen-week course online. You know, that's stress you know especially because like they're also like thinking about their family they you know maybe they might have lost their job if like school didn't continue so like they're probably under immense amounts of stress too and they have multiple classes to teach and you're only learning from one so i don't know just don't be an asshole to your teachers i'm sorry that i made that comment i feel guilty <laughs> saying that a while ago <laughs> no, no, just don't I be think... an asshole in general really yeah no i think i think that's very true though is because Obviously, my mom's a, a primary school teacher in New yeah. Zealand, or what did you guys call it like lower school, grade school? Yeah, I don't know what you school. guys call it. Um, I think it's one way to say. Elementary, I, yeah. Um, yep. But she finds it tough to balance like having her kids, even though like we have physical learning here in New Zealand at the moment, like we don't have yeah. online stuff, hmm. which is quite lucky for some people. Um, but like even teachers are still finding it hard to make like a curriculum like just going by like week to week just to find all the resources they need for teaching and then for people in other countries like imagine going through the same process like and then having to do it online i think is just that extra factor of of hardship for them yeah so you know like shout out to our like, teachers yeah shout out to teachers man well, most of them. Some of them. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of them, I'd say, like, they're, they're really good. Like, I love I love most of my props. They all seem really nice. Here I don't we go again. Them out, but I do have to say. Hey, I didn't one guy. All my props, All my props right now in college, I really enjoy. I'll, I'll say that. I'll say that. Shout out. No, shout out not. my college, dude. Shout out. Shout out. But, but yeah, I don't I just wanted to like, shout out. I felt bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Like we we know this episode has been fucking every corner at this point, um, topic wise. But I think like just the one thing that we wanna just reiterate, um, just just don't be ashamed of whatever you're you're dealing with because Yeah. It it's important, right? Mm -hmm. And That's also cool. yeah. don't be afraid to get help. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I, I come from like like my dad was a like a, a tradie which basically means you worked in like a lot of uh, like manual labor jobs right and his so approach like, uh, his approach to things was like oh toughen up eat some concrete or some shit like that 
Uh, and surprisingly enough, after he found out that I was dealing with some like mental health shit, he his whole perspective sort of changes, right? Yeah. And I think like maybe maybe like you just have to like be able to like willing to just tell people or, like just reach out that's the one thing I want to emphasize so much is just reach out because you don't know uh, the help you might end up getting right like suddenly your parents from like a diehard boomer with like that shit mentality might change because it's their kid and they're more willing to get involved with it and if that still doesn't help there's still plenty of avenues don't feel like there's nothing there for you there's plenty of things there for you you no, you're never truly alone. I promise you that. There's, there's no point going countless of nights telling yourself that you're worthless because that's not true. Everyone has value, no matter what. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's really well put, man. Yeah, man. Wholesome note to wrap up uh, the episode. If that's what you guys are thinking. I. Unless you have more yeah. to say. I, I, I'm good. My my um my palate is, uh no sorry it's good I can't. your thirst is quenched yeah that's, I'm that's still so thirsty my, my palate is uh hungry <laughs> <We're> <laughs> hungry. <laughs>
but like um that whole topic about you know what do you do when it's out of your control at that point that's when it really starts to get hard right mm -hmm. because it's literally out of your control there's nothing you can do there's no input you can put in to make it better for yourself and i guess that's sort of like a taste of what it's going to be like in the coming future for us yeah because there's no more guarantees yeah yeah especially with this pandemic yeah yeah um I think, like, in terms of, of mental states, I've been quite lucky that New Zealand was able to do, like, a short quarantine and get, get it out of the country. Um, so we I wasn't just stuck inside, like, the whole time. I was able to go out, like, after, like, a you know, short period, I was able to actually go out, uh, which is really helpful for your mental, to be able to see other people and not just see the same four people um even if you have like a hatred for one of them like to be able to see different people it's really nice like just having that refreshing sort of like take on life yeah that's that's one of the things that got me through the what was it like five week lockdown it was really nice so, yeah that's good imagine if you're still living here dude Oh, I I mean, I would probably be like I'd be able to go out and see Benjo and Liam, um, but I'd obviously I'd still probably have a bit of uh, anxiety, like more than I do now. I'd say. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm quite I'm quite happy that New Zealand's out of lockdown. We had a five week lockdown. Yeah, it was a five week lockdown of no no leaving the farm. Uh it was yeah, it was, it was sort of intense really. Like I think they gave out about a hundred fines within like the first week to people. Uh, it was like almost like eight thousand dollar fines or something. Some ridiculous yeah. number like that. People that decided to to leave the house when they weren't supposed to, but I mean, yeah, well, they should do that here. <laughs> they should, but I don't see your country doing that. Sorry. I mean, I, at this point, it's almost like we're just trying to coexist with it rather than try to eradicate it, because like. Hmm. Up until I think we're just doing that thing where like we're just waiting for the vaccine and then we're just trying to coexist until that point. It kind of just seems that way. Yeah, maybe for nice to COVID, it'll <laughs> it'll be nice to us in return. Yeah, Corona, take please. it on some Wookies. Yeah, you Corona, know, I'll bake you some cookies if you don't infect me. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> please, I want to fucking die. Yeah, it's like it's it's just. It's just unfortunate. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Was that, yeah, definitely. Was that the big was, Rona? Or... No, that was, yeah, Rona heard me talking. He's like, you got <laughs> cookies, bitch? cookies. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I get what you mean. Yeah. Yeah, I've also had a lot of, like, anxiety uh, because I've, like, got put on bed rest uh like after my lung collapsed so i would have been stuck in this room for the past like almost two months now um like i can't go out and exercise uh which like normally i'd i'd like to try and do you know going for a run you feel refreshed after but mm -hmm. yeah i'm i'm very kind of stuck here can't do much like you know busy. always in pain like physical pain not busy like, you know anything else so that's tough it's man. been hard it's been hard dang do they still have you on like ketamine <laughs> i fucking wish yeah <laughs> bro fucking wish oh <laughs> for the cat dude bro well, for the cat yeah, yeah i'll ask i'll ask my surgeon when i go on friday 
<laughs> Man, Kane's mad because now they uh, demoted him to Zannies. That's all he has now. <laughs> uh, I'm still about fucking Codeine. Damn, fuck. What? <laughs> what do you mean, fuck? Apparently we're all druggies here. Mm. I'm not saying nothing, but yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been told I can't even smoke anymore. Like anything, like anything, like ciggies, vape, anything. Well, ciggies can. Well, some fucking ciggies can. <laughs> like a noisy mom. Yeah. But yeah, you're <laughs> speaking any language, dog. Like a noisy mom. That sounds like <laughs> mini me. I don't know why. Fucking mong. You speak English, dude? Is it bad that I sort of actually was able to understand that? <laughs> no, it's a good kind of... Uh, you're, you're a linguist. It's, it's you're a cunning language. language. I'm an artist. Yeah, yeah, he didn't speak mini-me, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I, I speak autistic. Oh, no, dude, it's not. It's not. Um, uh, Alright, so takeaways. <laughs> there we go. Uh, online school sucks. Um, oh. ketamine is great. <laughs> oh my god. Teachers are trying their best. Teachers are trying don't, their best. And be try an to be like a centipede. Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. no more human centipede, please. Oh, and I think like the last thing, just like, you know, focus on yourself. Get yeah. Down, you know? yeah. That's it. Uh, if, uh, if anyone ever needs any, uh, any like to rant to, you know, feel, uh, feel free to like hit me up, you know. <laughs> Yeah, he's on Discord at local okay. stoner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but yeah, are we still gonna have the numbers in the description? For we should, we should yeah, yeah, I think we should. Yeah. The the health hotlines and whatever. Yeah, so we'll put yeah. the the links to the hotlines in the description uh, box below. Stuff like that. So check that out. You know, remember to hit that bell icon so you can get notifications for more wet brains related content. Hit that subscribe button. If we get to a, a nice point, maybe we'll get sponsored by BetterHelp and we can better help you guys. Nice. I want NordVPN. I want <laughs> Mindscape. No one, I, I want Adam and Eve. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> cool. Yeah, what about Shade Rattle Legends? <laughs> oh, <laughs> what about some Gamer Subs? Can we get G Fuel in? <laughs> okay, oh, all, shit, po all shit posting me? memes aside, all shit posting memes aside. Um, I know this episode has been fucking chaotic, uh, but honestly, I think it just has some very insightful things and my little bit of lighthearted humor to like help you get through things. And no matter where you are, whatever you're doing, we hope you're having a great time or trying to have a great time and that you understand and help yourself, treat yourself, you know, shit like this doesn't happen often. So make sure you take the time out of the day to like focus on yourself and, uh, yeah, we hope we can bring you some more content. Hope this made you laugh. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. Have a good time.